of what he said. I'm sending you into the world. Go and preach the gospel. Just give him glory. The Lord who has been with you for life. The Lord who has been with you. Amen. All right, please take your bulletin. We want to sing together one of our theme songs for this year. The first one, we'll be having three of them. Is your all on the altar? Is the first one. The second one is trust and obey. And the third one is I'll say yes. I'll say Demanding our obedience this year. Uh, let's read just chapter one together for the time of the series. On your seats, can we read? We have love for sweet peace and for failing to increase and have endlessly fervently prayed that we cannot have rest or the perfect duty. Sweet rest as you
says, the word I have spoken unto you, they are not idle words. They are your very life. Another one says, the spirit gives life. The word I have spoken to you, they are spirits and they are life. As many of us that we want life, which I believe everyone here wants this year, you will need to walk in the word of the Lord. The song the choir will be singing right now is a prayer that the Lord will help us to let his word direct our path in the name of Jesus. That is, let your word guide me, let your word lead me, that you will not do anything this year that will be contrary to the word of the Lord. May the Lord help each of us to do such in Jesus' name.
celebrate the choir some more. Let's just give glory to God. Come on, put those hands together for the Lord. Let's celebrate the Lord. That was a very wonderful start. That's a very wonderful start. I have always said that there are certain ways of singing, there are certain pieces of music that you don't find some other place except if you come to New Estee Baptist Church. Amen. So I encourage other people to come and have a feel of what God is doing in this place and how you are being ministered to and how you are being nurtured in the faith and the kind of ingredients that God is using to build your Christian faith. You cannot turn out anyhow. You must turn out as God wants you to turn out because I know that so much is being invested in your spiritual life to develop you and make you strong. I'd like you to please tell other people to come because here, God is blessing us. Put your hands together. Let's appreciate it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'd like to give thanks to God for yet another Sunday, the very first Sunday of the year 2016. And I'm glad you made it. Please help me tell your neighbor, I'm glad you made it. Ha ha, I'm glad you made it. And I'm glad I can see you today doing well. God bless you real good. You have started well, you will end up very well. Ah, you didn't hear that prayer. I say you will end up very well. You have started well, you will end up very well. In the name of Jesus Christ. The God of the first day is also the God of the last day. So the God that saw you through into the first day of the year and has brought you the first Sunday of the year, he will also bring you to the last Sunday of the year and the last day of this year. If your, your, if your amen is louder than that, it will be better for you. Congratulations. Help me congratulate your neighbor. Sitting next to you, left or right, congratulations. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for the wonderful things that God did in 2015. It was indeed a year of divine acceleration. You can see the result. That on the first Sunday of the year 2016, you have like five children that you are dedicating. That's the result of what happened in 2015. A lot of acceleration took place that year. And today we can see the results. Hallelujah. Once you accelerate, you are sure to have breakthrough. Praise God. So acceleration leads you to breakthrough. Amen. You are welcome. Congratulations. I congratulate all the parents of those children. And I pray that the Lord will continue to bless you. Last year you had acceleration. This year you will have breakthrough. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's take our bulletin. Please take the prophetic word. And very quickly let's prophesy this upon our lives as we share the word of God can we stand together the choir just finished singing and asking God to order our steps we will agree with them in this prophetic declaration because that declaration agrees perfectly with the song that the choir has brought our way. I'd like us to look at that together. One, two, go. The king will advance before you. The Lord himself will lead you. Do you believe that prayer? Okay. I want you to pray that prayer for somebody else. Huh? You will say it to that person three times and say it like a prayer, like you really mean it. And I want you to say it with confidence that God will do what you have said he will do. Amen. Thereafter, you will prophesy that same word upon your life, upon your family, as you journey in the year 2016. It's taken from Micah chapter 2, verse 13. Micah chapter 2, verse 13. One, two, go. The Lord will advance before you. The Lord himself. Lord himself will lead you. Amen. Say to yourself, the, the king will advance before me.
in year 2016, the Lord or the King himself will advance before me. The Lord himself will lead me. Turn that to a prayer for yourself. Let me hear it aloud. Go ahead and pray. Yield yourself to the King. Let him advance before you. Lead your, yield yourself to the Lord and let him go before you. Let the Lord lead you. I want you to say, Lord, I have never passed through this route before. Lord, I've never been on this path before. Father, I've never witnessed a year like this before. So it's a very brand new year and I don't know the way. But Lord, I put my hands in your hands and I ask you to lead because you know the end even before the beginning. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the first and the last. Apart from you, I'll be lost. Apart from you, I'll be conquered. Apart from you, I'll be defeated. Apart from you, I'll be overcome. Apart from you, I will crash on the way. Apart from you, I will fail. Apart from you, I will be defeated. Apart from you, I will suffer disappointment. But with you, Lord, on the way, I know that I'll make it. I know with you ahead, I can make it. I know I'll get to the end of the year. I'll get to the end of your purpose for me for this year. So, O oh King, I ask you to advance before me. Lord, I ask that you lead me throughout this year. In the name of Jesus, help me handle the obstacles that may be waiting for me. Help me deal with the challenges that are lying in waiting for me. Lord, I ask you to advance ahead of me. Pull down the mountains, fill up the valleys. Pull down the mountains, fill up the valleys. Resolve difficulties, deal with challenges and issues. Oh God, I pray that whatever will stand like the rivers of the Jordan, let it pass for me. Lord, whatever stands as the waters of the Red Sea, Lord, make a way through them. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, lead me through the wilderness of this year. God, lead me through the wilderness of this year. As I surrender myself to you, Lord, Ah, every uncertainty, every uncertainty, Lord, take care of them. Resolve every uncertainty on my behalf and land me safe to the end of this year. In the name of Jesus, I put my hands in your hands. I ask you to lead. I put my hands in your hands. I ask you to lead. I put my hands in your hands, Lord. I ask you to lead. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Somebody pray with me, O oh Lord. I ask you to empower me to climb every mountain this year and cross every river. In the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, I ask that you empower me this year to cross every mountain and, and cross every river. To climb every mountain and cross every river. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray that prayer for yourself. Let's ask for power. Let's ask for grace. Let's ask for enablement. Let's ask for strength to be able to cross the mount to, to climb the mountains that are coming. The mountains that are waiting. We will climb them and get to the other side. I want you to pray, Lord, I receive power to cross every river. Hey, every river on my way, I'm, co I'm crossing, I'm crossing. No river will swallow me. Father, I will not drown in any river. This year, I will not drown in every river. I will not drown in any river. This year, I will not drown in any river. In the name of Jesus, I will not be frustrated before any mountain. In the name of Jesus, I will not be frustrated before every mountain. In the name of Jesus, I will climb the mountains. I will cross the rivers. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I, will, I bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. I'd like you to pray with me, O oh Lord. On this first Sunday, I receive strength to face every giant on my way with, with victory. In the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, I receive strength. I receive unction. 
I receive power. I receive anointing on this first Sunday of the year to face every giant that stands on my way in 2016. In the name of Jesus, I will overcome them. I will defeat them. I receive the victory in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray that prayer for yourself. Every giant, every giant, every giant awaiting me. Every giant within, every giant without, every giant around, every giant above, every giant underneath, every giant in the water, every giant on the land, every giant in the sea, every giant in the air, every giant on the trees, every giant at work, every giant in your business, every giant in your family, every giant against your destiny. I'd like you to open your mouth today on this first Sunday and say, I am coming in the name of the Lord. David said to Goliath, I come to you in the name of the Lord. And because he was coming in the name of the Lord, victory was sure. Open your mouth and say, I come to you in the name of the Lord. I approach you in the name of the Lord. I will bring you down in the name of the Lord. I will conquer you in the name of the Lord. I shall not be intimidated by any giant on my way this year. In the name of Jesus, I will not be intimidated by any giant on my way this year. In the name of Jesus, I shall not be intimidated by any giant on my way this year. In the mighty name of Jesus, when Goliath rises up, I shall bring him down. When the Amalekites rise up, I shall overcome them. When the Jebusites arise, they will be put to shame. When the Canaanites rise up, I will overcome them. When the Gilgashites arise against me, I shall not be afraid. The Lord is with me. He will be the rampart. He will be my strength and my bulwark. The Lord is going ahead of me. The King is already advancing on my way. And I know that the Lord is leading me. And because the Lord is leading me, I shall fear no evil. O oh, ye giants, I come against you today in the name of Jesus, the giant of sickness. I overcome you today in the name of Jesus, the giant of failure. I overcome you today in the name of Jesus, the giant of disappointment. I overcome you today in the name of Jesus, the giant of fear. I overcome you today in the name of Jesus, the giant of hunger. I overcome you today in the name of Jesus, the giant of poverty. I overcome you today in the name of Jesus, the giant of economic depression. I overcome you today in the name of Jesus, the giant of fruitlessness. I overcome you today in the name of Jesus, the giant of loneliness. I overcome you today in the name of Jesus, the giant of uncertainty. I overcome you today in the name of Jesus, the giant of joblessness. I overcome you today in the name of Jesus, the giant of idleness. I overcome you today in the name of Jesus, the giant of iniquity. I overcome you today in the name of Jesus, the giant of unbelief. I overcome you today in the name of Jesus, the giant in the field. I overcome you today in the name of Jesus, the spiritual giants. I overcome you today in the name of Jesus, the physical giants. I overcome you today in the name of Jesus. I say I overcome you today. Kalababa <laughs> La totin ken templa tus galabasha Miria ramama zuka kalia kramoda kantelebo Rebos kibran halaba kenene masa I overcome you today I overcome you today in the name of the Lord I overcome you today in the name of the Lord I overcome you today in the name of the Lord I overcome you today in the name of the Lord Thank you Father Thank you Lord Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody say, O oh Lord, all through 2016, I shall not be intimidated 
I have the strength of God in me. I have the power of God in me. I have the spirit of God in me. I carry the grace of God in me. If you believe that prayer, go ahead and say it with your mouth. What do you have in you? What is it? What is the thing? What is the equipment that will help you through the year? I have the word of God with me. I don't know what you have. I don't know what you have, but I have the word of God. I have the spirit of God. I have the grace of God. I have the power of God. I have the blessings of God. I have the favor of God. I have the presence of God. I have the support of God. I don't know what you have, but I have this God in my inside. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I don't know what you have. I'd like you to announce what you have. Please, I want you to know there is something God has put inside of you. Announce it aloud. That's your weapon for victory. It is your weapon for, for breakthrough. That's the investment of heaven to help you break through this year. Announce what you have. Announce what you have. I like Peter. Peter looked at the crippled man at the gate and said, Ah, silver and gold I do not have. But what I have, I give to you. I have Jesus. He gave Jesus. And Jesus resolved the problem on ground. What do you have? Who is in the inside of you? Can you look at that challenge face to face and say, I have Jesus. And I come to you in the name of him that is inside of me. I come in the grace that is inside of me. I come not in my own strength or power, but I come in the name of Jesus. I come in the power of the investment that heaven has made upon me. That is the name I come with, and that is the name I come in. And I will overcome because of that name. Thank you. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Most High. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Most High. Everybody lift up your two hands and say, Oh Lord, I step into the year 2016, believing you for unusual breakthrough, according to your word. So it shall be unto me this year. I believe your word. Help me, O oh God. To see the manifestation of your word upon my life this year 2016 in the name of Jesus say with me oh Lord I receive unusual breakthrough now I want you to mention to God whatever areas of breakthrough you are trusting God for as you say I receive breakthrough I believe God for breakthrough can you go ahead now and begin to tell the Lord what area of breakthrough are you trusting God for what is that area please this is your own open check this is the first Sunday if this is what we do this morning that is great God brought us here so we can lay the foundation for the year we need to define how the year is going to go I want you to believe the word of God. What came out of my mouth was not my own word. It was put in my spirit by the spirit of God. And I simply made my bowels available to him. My tongue available to him. My mouth available to him. And he has passed through me to pronounce his very word on your life. But you see, it's not going to happen. Except if you position yourself in faith. Jesus will say to them, Be it unto you according to your faith. Therefore, this morning, I'd like you to believe the word that has proceeded from this altar for 2016 and begin now to key into it and define the particular area or areas that you are believing God for a breakthrough and believe God to, uh, to address that area. I want you to begin to make a reference to it right now that by the 31st of December, 
Or before then, I want to be able to tick this and tick that and tick this and tick that as the things that God has answered for me in accordance with the word that he has spoken, which I took and held on to and I believed. Open your mouth and don't be tired of praying. We are already in the season of praying and fasting. We are beginning effectively tomorrow, but we are setting the ground from today. We are preparing the ground right now. Please do not go away just like that. Don't just come to church and go the way you came. There is something that God is doing per every minute. When God moves, please follow in His direction. When He moves, follow in His way. There is something He wants to do. So position yourself well, because I'm too, too sure in my spirit that unusual breakthrough is breaking forth in this house. Unusual things are going to happen in families. Unusual things will happen in particular jobs. Unusual things are going to happen in businesses here. I see unusual things happening in the academic life of some young people. I see do an amazing thing in the personal life of some people. I see God do an amazing thing in the spiritual development of members of this church. What is it that you are trusting God for? If this is why you came to church, then settle the matter once and for all. Please don't come here to escort other people. If you have been having struggles with your health, this is the moment to say, God, the God of breakthrough, the God of impossibility, the God of unusual things, settle my case once and for all, that my health will no more continue to intimidate me, my health will no more continue to fail me, my health will no more continue to be a problem. I trust you for an unusual move that will bring about breakthrough in my health area. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and tell the Lord. Don't stand in this service and be a spectator. Whether you are young or old, don't be in this service and be a spectator. This service is very strategic. This service is very, very strategic. This service is very, very important to your destiny in 2016. This service is very, very crucial to what God wants to do in 2016. But if you, don't feel, if you don't feel like being a part of it, then you will see it happen. Oh my God. But you will not be a part of it. Why should you see it happen? And why should you not be a part of it? Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Just say a good amen with me. Amen. When you say amen, say it like you mean it. Amen. When you say amen, please say it like you mean it. Amen. Elisha looked at the servant and said to him, You will see this thing come to pass with your very eyes, but you will not be a part of it. Because the servant has said, Even if, even if God, Open the windows of heaven. Can this kind of thing happen? Even if. So he transferred the matter from Elijah to God. It was a personal challenge against the sovereignty of God. He was like saying that there are certain things that God cannot do. Even if he shows his sovereignty. That day. The man of God was vexed in his spirit. He said for standing as. For standing directly against God. Questioning his power you will see it come to pass. He said, as for coming to pass, this thing will come to pass because nothing will stop it. Not even you. But you will not be a partaker. By the break of the morning, that miracle happened. Everybody was trooping to the place of the miracle to go and enjoy the booty. In the course of that, they pushed him down right at the gate of Samaria. And before he would rise up, they had stamped, they had you know, trampled over him a big stampede and he died. He died that day when the miracle had happened. He saw it happen, but he did not share part of it. Whatever will not allow you to share of the pronouncement of God for this church this year, I come against you today in the mighty name of Jesus. I stand here on this altar 
as God's messenger to you and God's minister over you and the angel over this assembly to whom God has given spiritual charge and responsibility for your soul and who also shall account for that soul I proclaim today in the name of Jesus that this God who has spoken this word he will pursue this word to come to pass in your life in the name of Jesus and whatever stands on the way today I bring it away in the name of Jesus I pull it, pull it off the way in the name of Jesus I destroy it in the name of Jesus whether it is a personal disposition in you today I contend with it in the name of Jesus whether that thing is external to you today I contend with it in the name of Jesus because they want to rob you of the blessings that are, that are coming this year I stand on that thing and stand against it I contend with it I fight against it I resist it today by the blood of Jesus and by the word of my testimony in the name of Jesus can you say with me, O oh Lord, oh Lord, according to your word, to your word let, it let it be unto me. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. every hindrance, every let me hear it loud and clear, every hindrance, every hindrance. please say it aloud, every hindrance, every hindrance, every hindrance, every hindrance, every hindrance to unusual breakthrough, I stand against it today. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth aloud and stand against every hindrance. Every hindrance, every hindrance. Everything that will constitute a blockade. Everything that will stand on the way. Everything that will make you see the breakthrough in the lives of others. And you yourself will not have it. I said today, I raise a standard against it. Whether those hindrances are spiritual or they are physical or they are personal or they are internal or they are external whether they are from people or they are orchestrated by spirits whatever has mounted that obstacle and that hindrance today we raise a standard against it in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Economic challenges will not hinder this breakthrough from coming to pass. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Finally say with me, O Lord, by the spirit of unusual breakthrough, running in the house from this moment I refuse to remain where I was in 2015 say it aloud say it aloud if you believe it say it aloud if you believe it say it aloud say it aloud say it aloud Keep on saying it, keep on saying it, keep on saying it. I refuse to remain where I used to be. I refuse to remain on the same spot. I refuse to do things the same way. I refuse to, I refuse to produce the same results. I refuse to suffer the same things I suffered in 2016. I am moving on. I'm marching on. By the spirit of breakthrough that is in the house. I declare today in the name of Jesus that I'm moving on. I'm marching on. The gates of hell shall not prevail. The powers of darkness will not hinder me. The spirit of the devil shall not stand on my way. The Lord shall settle me. I refuse to remain on the same spot. In my health, I refuse to remain the same spot. In my business, I refuse to remain on the same spot. In my job, I refuse to remain on the same spot. In my Christian faith, I refuse to remain on the same spot. In my work with God, I refuse to remain on the same spot. Things are changing. It's a brand new year. It's a new thing altogether. It's a brand new step I'm entering into. I'm entering into a new horizon. I'm entering a new realm. I 
I'm entering a new house. I'm getting new house from this moment. I refuse to remain on the same spot in my ministry. My style will not be the same. In Jesus' name we pray. If you believe the prayer that you have prayed, then give thanks to God for it. Give thanks to God for it. I want you to open your mouth and give thanks to God for it. If you want to clap, clap well. If you want to shout, shout well. Whatever you are doing, do it well like you mean it. Whatever you are doing, do it well like you mean it. If you want to, you can begin to celebrate your miracle. If you like, can you celebrate it? You can actually begin to celebrate your breakthrough right now up front. You can begin to celebrate your breakthrough up front. I can guarantee that you can begin to celebrate your breakthrough up front. Up front. Up front. You can actually begin to celebrate that breakthrough up front. Because God will prove himself true. His word will never fail. Glory to God most high. Can I have a good amen in this house? Somebody shout a louder amen. Amen. Before you sit down, I want to say that we have started a moment that will not give the devil some ease. I say what? We have started a moment that will not give the devil any ease at all. We will keep ourselves uneasy and place our feet upon the head of the devil and make things uneasy for him. In the book, in the scriptures, my book, it says, Woe unto them that are at ease in Zion. But because we have chosen not to be at ease in Zion, it's not going to be easy for the devil. 21 more days, beginning from tomorrow, I want you to join in the spirit of what God is, is already doing here and now. The theme for our 21 days prayer and fasting is facing your giants. You can't have a breakthrough until you have dealt with the giants. So today, by the grace of God, we announce a 21 days moment of facing your giants. We may have run away from our giants for many years, and no wonder we have been intimidated. So long as Israel was chickened away, so long as they withdrew, including Saul, and could not come out and face that Goliath, they were defeated. And the man could make jest of them and taunt them and yap the, the name of their God. But the day a young man came and said, no, it is not time to retreat. It is time to do what? To face this devil. And that young man said, I'm going to go there and face him. Even when Saul said, you can't do it. He has credentials you don't have. The young man said, you too. You don't know that I have credentials he does not have. And my credentials are greater. We are going to compare. We will see whose credentials will survive. He faced the giant. What did he do with the giant at the end of the day? He brought him down. Why? He faced him. You have been running away from your giant for too long. That's why you have remained where you are. Small. But God is breaking through for you. So that you can move from being small to being great. Can I have a good amen? Amen. If you are going to be great, you will first you will first of all do what? You must be ready to do what? Face the giant. I say this time around, I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid of you. If I was not given the spirit of fear, there is in me a deposit of the spirit of power and of love and of sound mind. In it I'm coming before you. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If you go out that way in the strength of the Lord, in the power of the Lord, then your giants must bow. Can I have a good amen in this house? Tomorrow our prayer point is, take, our first prayer point is the same thing I have just said. Tomorrow we are going to pray for breakthrough over our giants. First prayer, the first area of prayer, we are praying and overcoming our giants. Breakthrough over your giants. That's our prayer for tomorrow. Breakthrough over your giants. You have, you have 
I'm going to give you the background scripture to all of this we are going to be doing for the next 21 days. The background scripture is taken from Numbers chapter 33, from verse 1 to 33. Numbers chapter 13, sorry. Numbers 13, 1 to 33. Numbers 13, 1 to 33. Numbers 13, 1 to 33. First Samuel 17, 1 to 50. First Samuel 17, 1 to 50. So take those scriptures, use them, engage with God in the course of the day, beginning from now right through till tomorrow, and get back here in the evening so that we can together join our forces for just one hour and resist the giants and break through them and then continue in the rest of the year. Amen. First, Numbers 13, 1 to 33. First Samuel 17, 1 to 50. First Samuel 17, 1 to 50. Numbers 13, 1 to 33. Did you get those scriptures? Somebody say yes. yes. We'll try to send them on, uh, on, uh, on, to your phones so that you can be reminded. But our prayer for tomorrow is prayer we are overcoming or we are praying for breakthrough over all our giants. Please spend time with God in the course of the day. Engage God. Whatever are the giants that have challenged your life that are standing before you, please don't waste time time and don't be intimidated please don't spare any effort don't spare any strength put in the best of your time and engage with god as you engage with god bible says that when jacob had triumphed with god what happened he also triumphed with circumstances and situations he triumphed even with men so if you engage with god and triumph in that le at that level you will triumph over all the giants that stand before you. Please listen to me. Your giants may not necessarily be my giants. As I'm sitting here, I don't know the giants that my brother, my brother uh, Bulus has been contending with over the years. And I don't know for how long. I don't know the giants he's been, that Brother Dan has been contending with and over how many years. But I know that he may know one or two, but he does not know, know the giants that I have been contending with over the years. Maybe there, are, there may be one or two uh, I have shared with him or with them to say I have this challenge, but that's not all. If they open me in the inside, you will see what you have never seen, you know what you've never known, and you will see the, the battles I've been going through which you have never known I go through. Sometimes it is not showing on your face. You may just be looking nice and fine, and everybody say, oh, you look great, you look fine. You know that in the inside there is, there is a struggle. You come into church, you just put on a beautiful gele. Under that gele, wahala. Wearing a very nice lace with correct shoes to match and a nice bag that you are carrying. But all of those were what? They are just things in the outside. But let's visit the inside. What are we going to see? That's why you need to engage with God on a personal note. Because I don't know you as much as you know yourself. You don't know me as much as I know myself. So engage with God. Please let these 21 days be for you a moment of change. A moment of transformation. A moment of repositioning a moment of victory. And then we will sing the song of victory all the rest of the year. Can I have a good amen? amen. Can I have a good amen? amen? All right, please take note of this and don't miss the meetings. 6 p.m. every day. It's a time for sacrifice, but the greater the sacrifice, the greater the blessing. 6 p.m. every day, except on Sunday. On Sunday we meet here in church and then we meet again at our home fellowship level. But Monday to Saturday, for only three weeks, we meet here in church. Pay the price, spend the time, make the sacrifice, and watch God give you an unusual breakthrough that you will see. Let me tell you, the profit will be much more than the expenses. Do you believe it? So I'd like to see you by the word of God. Amen. Please open your Bible, and let me leave you with this word before we quit. We still have to dedicate officers today. Genesis chapter, chapter 26 is our theme verse. I'm going to be spending most of the first quarter I'm going to be spending most of the first quarter dealing with the word of God addressing the theme. So uh, today I'm glad we have started off at this note but we'll continue that way. Look at Genesis chapter 26 Genesis chapter 26. We'll read only verse 1 to verse 6 Genesis chapter 26 verse 1 to 6 and there was a famine in the land 
besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, unto Gerah. And Jehovah appeared unto Isaac and said to him, Do not go down to Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee. So John, dwell in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. For unto you I will, unto you and unto thy seed, I will give all these lands, and I will establish the oath which I swore unto Abraham thy father, and I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all the lands, all these lands. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my covenants, and my statutes, and my laws. Verse 6. And Isaac dwelt in Gerah. Amen. Amen. There are two things that are the hope that you and I have for a breakthrough. In other words, what is it that is going to guarantee your breakthrough? I want to introduce you to two things. We will be taking them one after the other or other things as the, as the, as the month goes on. But two things are mentioned there. Isaac, the son of Abraham, had actually been hiding under or enjoying the cover of his father. Whether there were challenges, whether there are troubles, whether there were whatever, Isaac may not have felt them directly because the father was there to cover. And God had a covenant with, with, with Abraham which actually was spilling into the generations of Abraham. But let me say here that the fact that God set out with Abraham did not in any way eliminate the realities of this earth. And the Lord had told him beforehand. He said, Come out from amongst your people, walk with me. I'll be your God, you will be my own follower. He said to him, I'm going to use you to be a blessing to the entire nations of the world. I'm going to bless you and then use you to bless others. But he said unto him, as many as will curse you, I will curse. If there were not going to be curses, he will not tell him that. What he's simply saying is that in the course of our journey together, because we are in this life, Things are going to rise opposite to what I mean, what I say, and what I want for you. They are going to rise. I want you to prepare your mind for it. But he said, do not worry about them. When they rise up and oppose you and open their mouth to speak against you, me, I will take over. And I will speak against them and I'm going to put a curse upon them so that the curse they put upon you cannot work because I will undo it. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word abides forever. I'm the only one that speaks a final word. In any situation, in any circumstance, except I have spoken, the last word has not yet been spoken. So, I do not give them power or finality. They will rise up because they don't want to see the prosperity of my word. And when they oppose you, they are not opposing you. They are opposing me because in you is the manifestation of my person and power. And when anything resists you, it's actually trying to bring down who I am and make nonsense of my declarations. And I won't sit and watch. I'm very jealous. And if I'm not jealous for anything, he said, I'm very jealous for my word. Anytime I speak, I put my life on the line. And because I have spoken to you, I therefore have put my life on the line. Whatever they do to undo this word, I will rise up with all that is inside of me to ensure that I overcome them so that my word can come to pass and stand and that my superiority over all cannot be tampered with by anybody. So Abraham traveled that way and oppositions came. Challenges came. Troubles came. But none of them overcame him. Hallelujah. And Isaac grew under that umbrella. Isaac grew under that covering. Whatever was coming, he was inside that covering and was, I mean, the father was the one that provided that cover for him. But the Bible says, if you check chapter 24, 25, you'll see, I, a day came when Abraham died. And when Abraham died, Isaac was now left on his own. 
To do what? To begin to face the realities of life. And to begin to do that journey all by himself with God. But God had brought him under covenant because of the covenant he made with Abraham. I heard him say, as I was with your father Abraham, so I will be with you. In other words, you too, you will have a taste of issues, challenges and problems. But as I was with your father and I overcame, so I will overcome for you. Therefore, if you are going to enjoy a breakthrough, you are going to need to depend on who? On me. And indeed, Isaac tasted. The Bible tells us here how that Isaac tasted adversity. First, it was that famine. The whole land of Canaan, no food, nothing is working. And the natural thing anybody does is to begin to think about what are my options. And the first thing that came was to run. Normally, that's what we want to do first. We want to run away. He wanted to relocate. In fact, not that he wanted. He relocated. I can't stand here and see this farming ravage my family. I'll be a new responsible father to sit here and watch my family wiped out by this situation. I need to rise up and show that I'm a man. I can handle my situations. And so what did he do? Let's leave this place. Because I can't stand here, neither die, nor my family die. He left. He left and moved on. And he came to Gera, a Philistine area, and met with the king. When he got there, he thought it was, it was going to be better there. Unfortunately, it was not any better. The famine was also in Gera. The people in Gera were also dying. The land was not producing. There was no water to water the ground. Nobody was going to farm. Everything was dry. Things were at a, at a standstill. If you remain there again, again, you will die. What was the next thing? He began to contemplate. I thought we could rest in Gera. But it's not a place to rest. There were allies also here. So, he began to contemplate to do what? To move to Egypt. To move to Egypt. So, it was in the midst of that. I like God. When the Bible says God, his mercies endure it forever. One would have expected all this while, before this time, that Isaac would have simply done what? Lift up your head to God and say, God, this is the situation we find ourselves. What will you have me to do? Uh -uh. What was he doing? He was busy doing what you and I would do. Using what? His mind. To try to solve the problem. And he was now looking at what? His options. Let's go to Gera. From Gera, let us go to Egypt. Maybe from Egypt, let's go to uh, Jericho. Maybe from Jericho. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe if he had combed the whole area. It is only when he comes everywhere and there is no way. And then he will now say, ah ah. Many of us, it is at that last point, you now remember God. But I thank God. God did not deal with him according to his ways. God does not deal with us according to our ways. While he was still contemplating the next option, the next move, God appeared. Was simply saying, young man, your hope is not in jumping from place to place. Your hope is not in changing from one business to the other. Your hope is not in the many options that people are going to put before you. Your hope is not in trial and error. Your hope is not in gimmicks. This one works, this one does not work. Their hope is not in what the market, even the market situation. Your hope is not there. God appeared. He said, I am your hope. Je uh, Isaac, don't go any further. Don't go to Egypt. Stop going places. Come to me. Look up. Look up to me. I'm your hope. And without me, you can't resolve the problem. This famine, I know about it. If it's going to be, to be resolved, it's me who will resolve it. So don't go places. Places don't have an answer for your problem. And I want to say here to us today, in the year 2016, our hope is God. Did you hear me well? 
I said what? Our hope is God. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we remember the name of the Lord, our God. Who is your hope? Our hope is in God. So, over the issues of breakthrough, over the issues of your challenges, over the issues of your concern, over all the intimidating powers, over all the giants that may be facing you as you travel in this year, please, the first thing you should do is not to be thinking about the human options and your many, many variables. Your first option is to go back unto God and say, God, without you I can do nothing. You are my hope. Where shall my help come from? I shall lift up my hair, my eyes up to the hills from where cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. If you lift up your eyes, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Those who put their trust in the Lord, they shall not be put to shame. Challenges will come, you will not be put to shame. This year, I don't see shame engulfing you. I don't see shame overpowering you. I don't see shame overwhelming you. I don't see shame on your face. Instead, I see you carrying a face of glory because faith, because shame will not withstand you. Why? You are not looking up unto men. You are not looking up to alternatives. Listen, your answer is not in Abuja. Your answer is not in Portacot. Your answer is not in Lagos. Your answer is not in, in, in China. Your answer is not in America. The answer is not in London. Your answer is not on any part of the face of this earth. But your answer is in God. So, your hope is in God. Please, this year, place your hope for breakthrough in God. When the Lord has put this in our hearts, that there will be an unusual breakthrough, we are not talking about what men can fix for you. Please, I want to beg you, don't try to help God in this team. Did you hear me well? Let nobody seated under the sound of my voice try to help God to achieve this team. He is well able to do what he says he will do. He doesn't need help. By, what, by, by this I mean, don't try to use human mind, human thinking, human methods to try to fix something for yourself and come and announce here in testimony. Don't, 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 don't. Because the tendency is that when you are trying to fix things for yourself, I tell you the truth, the enemy manipulates your mind and the likely thing you will do will be a wrong thing. Though nobody is there and nobody knows. But Jehovah knows. It will last. Hello? It will not last because whatever is not of God is not of God. And he will not stand to back it. He does not support whatever is not from him. So we are saying breakthrough, unusual breakthrough will come from God. Remember, it was God who appeared to the man. I didn't see in that scripture that the man went to God praying or tried to uh, do anything that will induce God. It was God by himself. In other words, the breakthrough of Isaac was initiated by God. That's your hope. The second hope you and I have, for sake of our time, second thing you have as your hope is what? When the Lord appeared unto Isaac, he, stayed, he told him, don't go down to Egypt. Everybody say instruction. Instruction. He told him, don't go down to Egypt. He also told him, remain, abide in the land I'm going to show you. Abide, stay, dwell here in Gera. All that is what? instruction and then he also said I will be with you and then he numbered the number of blessings he said was going to give to him what do I call that? I call that promise so there is instruction there is promise all of them I call them the word of God the word of God will come to you through this year by reason of instruction that's where your hope is listen you have a problem you have a problem if God will not speak. But you don't have any problem if God will speak. No matter how gloomy the situation may be, no matter how dark 
the night may be, no matter how difficult the situation will rise to be, even if it looks as if it's going to overwhelm you or swallow you, if God will not speak, then you have a problem. But if, if it's something that God can speak to, then you just need to do what? Wait and let him speak. For in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was what? The Word was God. So when God speaks, he's, it means he has, spoke, he has come personally into the situation. So God spoke by reason of instruction and by reason of promise. So our hope this year, first, is in God. Second, it is in His Word. So whether the Word comes to you by instruction this year, or it comes to you by promise this year, pick that Bible, look at the instructions of the Lord. Pick that Bible, look at the promises of God. None of them will fall to the ground. Whatever God says, is ready to do it. And therefore, that's where your hope is. When situations come up here and there, let somebody just pick up the Bible and say, I know that the Word of God holds hope for me. Because in Psalm 23, the Bible says in verse 4 that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil for the Lord is with me. That's what you are holding on the promise, one of the promises of God. And you will, that promise will carry you across that water. That promise will take you across that valley. That, that promise will carry you up over that mountain. Because that promise is of God. And it is the strength of God with which he spoke. So, the word of God coming to you either by instruction or promise is the place of your hope for this year. Your hope is in God. If you are going to enjoy breakthrough, your hope is in God. If you are going to enjoy breakthrough, your hope is in the word of God. As we progress in the month, we will look at these things in bits and pieces. And then we will charge our hearts under God as to what we should do with the revelations of the person of God and what we should do with the revelations of the word of God coming to us by instruction and by promise in order that we might live and enjoy the breakthrough that God has promised to us. My prayer is that God will help you and I to be well positioned to do what he wants us to do in order that we might receive what he has promised. Let me have a good amen. amen. Let us pray. The very reason why God could appear to us in the whole of this story, one of the things that is very basic is that from, I, from Abraham right down to Isaac, there was a relationship with God. If God is going to appear to you, if he's going to be your hope, if, he's going to, if his word is going to be your anchor this year, then you will have to have a relationship with him. If that word is going to mean anything to your heart, then you must have a relationship with him. And if you have not had a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ or with God through his son Jesus, then on this first Sunday, it may, it may just be the right thing, the first step to take in order to begin to see the breakthrough that we are talking about. You may just have to take this as the very first step. If you have not given your life to the Lord God through Jesus Christ, in other words, you are not born again, you don't have Christ inside of you, then you will be in trouble. You will be lost in the course of the year. You can't surmount the challenges and the difficulties if he's not in place because you'll be struggling in human strength, wisdom, and, and, and knowledge. This does not suffice. Christ in you is the hope of glory. If you are seated in this house, I don't want to assume that everybody is a believer. If you are here and you have not accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, let me pray with you very quickly. Let me pray with you very quickly. If you will put up your hand wherever you are, you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior on this first Sunday of the year, please let's do that quickly. Anybody? Anybody? My 
Hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I fear no trust the sweetest tree, but only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the Holy Rock. I stand all of the ground is sinking sand all of the ground is sinking sand sing it one more time on Christ the song solid rock I stand all of the Thank you, Eternal Father, for speaking to us this morning and helping us to fix our hearts on you. You are our hope. Our hope is in you and in your word. Father, grant, O oh God, that we will hold tenaciously to you and to your word, that we will tie ourselves around you, neither moving to the left nor right, O oh God, but insisting that it is only you and your word or nothing. Father, we pray that throughout this year, our communion with you, O oh Lord, will not diminish. Our respect for the word, our love for the word, our thirst for the word, our commitment to the word will not, do it, will not dwindle in the name of Jesus. I ask, O oh God, that as we journey this year, help us to remember you are our hope and our anchor. All other grounds are sinking sand. Grant, O oh God, that we will understand that all other options will not provide any solution. But that you alone are the solution to every challenge we may meet on the journey of this year. Help us so to know and live with that understanding in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And somebody say the good amen. amen. All right. We will take our offering now. And then at the close of the service, we will dedicate our workers. They can start off their work thereafter. The Lord. Praise the Lord. Happy New Year. It's time to bring God's tithes and our offerings before Him. If you have your tithes and, uh, and your offerings, bring them forward to the basket. If you have only your offerings, the ushers will come around to pick them from you. If you want to pay electronically, the POS is at the back of the extension. Quietly make your way there and make your payments. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we rise and have a great speaker?